So, you know, you talked about a very natural disaster, one of the biggest ones that has hit our country kind of thing. I myself have never been in a hurricane. And, you know, Dorian just kind of went through uh, last week or whatnot. What is it like going through a hurricane? Well, living in a region where hurricanes hit often. And this was where? This was in um, Gulfport, Mississippi. Okay. So you're constantly preparing for hurricanes that never come. Mm -hmm. And I remember getting woke up at 6 a.m. My dad was babysitting and, you know, he said, you got to get to Walmart, get formula, get diapers, get baby food. And here I am at $40. I'm in line at Walmart getting whatever I can with $40, which isn't much, can of formula, pack mm -hmm. of diapers. And yeah, I think I stood in line for about three hours just wow, to that get that. Up? Yeah. And, you know, that's pretty typical. So I didn't think anything of it until um, it just started getting more and more severe. And we were seeing, you know, but there was only about two days to prepare for it. And yeah, it was, I think it was scary when it actually happened. And I had gone through so many small storms before that I didn't think it was that big of a deal. And not only did I have myself going through that Cat 5 hurricane hitting, which contrary to popular belief, it actually, the eye wall hit Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, not New Orleans. So it was about 20 miles away from where I was at mm -hmm. the shelter. And not only was I experiencing that, but then I had to protect, you know, this precious little baby who was six months old at the time. Wow. And that was the first real experience of motherhood that was just like, I'm going to die for my son. And those motherly instincts just kicked in like that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, a couple months before I was going through a rough time and I basically told myself that, you know, I would starve so that he would never have to go hungry. And I lived to that, you know, and I still do to this day, but that it was put to the test a couple times. And um, obviously I didn't starve, but I, you know, I went hungry and, and it's just one of those things. But yeah, going through the hurricane was one of the most terrifying experiences while you're holding your child. Wow. And so, it, I mean, what is it like? Is it I mean, it sound like a train just running over you, or is well, it I mean, water flooding up through the floor? Or? Well, for me, I was actually in my old high school that they had opened up as a Red Cross shelter, mm -hmm. and I was sitting in the hallway. We were actually, I was with my dad and neighbors, and um, we were one of the lucky families that got a classroom instead of just having to camp out in the hallway, but um, about... I want to say around 3 a.m., um, things started getting really bad, and so they moved us out into the hallway, and y you couldn't really see anything because it was dark, but then the lightning would come, and you would just see, you know, trees from the rain had come down for so long, and then the wind just knocked the trees over because they were saturated from all the rain, and the noises, and you were just hearing car windows blowing out left and right, Jeez, wow. and... Yeah, so we actually heard the um, air conditioner unit get sucked up, like the outside unit got blown off of the roof and created kind of a vacuum into the classroom. So we were on the other side of that door and you could just hear, I mean, the wind and the, the pressure, everything. That is terrifying. Yeah. It, it's not fun. <laughs> no, and I think for a long time I had to kind of detach myself from that because... Everyone else went through it, too, and I think it really hit me when we moved to California that no one else around me had been through what I went through. And, you know, when I was in Gulfport, it's like everyone that I knew had that experience or something similar. Some had so much worse experiences than I did. So it was just kind of that silent, unspoken thing that you all went through it. Your town was obliterated. It looked like a bomb went off. Um, all buildings were gone. Um, like your home, did it get destroyed? I was actually in between homes and Garrett and I were couch surfing. So, um, oh. yeah, so we, in a sense, we, all I had was what was in the back of my car anyway. So, um, after that, there was nowhere to really go because everyone that I knew had lost stuff. So trying to find housing and, and all of that was 
pretty terrifying. What did you do? Brian and I were lucky enough that we ended up finding a house because his apartment, he was sharing apartment with a bunch of Coasties and the station was completely obliterated. It was gone. It was a roof and steel beams and that was it. So um, his apartment got condemned because he was the only building that was a two-story building. All the other ones were three-story buildings and not one third story survived. Wow. Yeah. And he was actually in the apartment complex during the hurricane riding it out. Oh, wow. Because he wasn't on duty at that point. Yeah. Well, then I imagine he's immediately dispatched to oh, go yeah. and, I mean, geez, wow. Yeah. So he was doing search and rescue for, I don't know, I think he was doing search and rescue for five days or maybe only three days. And then, you know, it becomes recovery at that point. But.